Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to today's Syncfusion webinar. Myself, Bharat Marimoto. I'm a product manager at Syncfusion. So today's agenda is an introduction to Gantt chart. Why use a Gantt chart as a project management tool? Introduction to Syncfusion Gantt chart. How to initiate and work with the features in Syncfusion Gantt chart. A Gantt chart. What is it? A Gantt chart is a project management tool used for planning and scheduling the project. Instead of an old school way of using Excel to manage your projects, Gantt chart is an effective tool to manage your projects. It helps you to manage the events, resources, and timeline under one roof. A typical Gantt Gant chart layout looks like this one. It has the triggered path on the left side and a timeline view on the right side. So why use a Gantt chart for a project management tool? Gantt chart is more manageable while you use a large data for your projects. It enhances the team productivity. It's a more effective resource planning tool. Different groups can stay on the same page in the project. Project and team requirements are clear. You can identify the essential task and take action on them at any time. You can know what's going on in your project. The domains where Gantt is used are construction sectors, cargo and shipping tracking, manufacturing industries, delivery management, event management, education sectors, and all the sectors where behavior and system monitoring is required. So why use a Syncfusion Gantt chart? Syncfusion Gantt chart is lightweight and built on a modular architecture. You can integrate it easily into your application with the developer-friendly APIs. It's, it provides an option for a high-level UI customization. It's easy to create and manage. It has a responsive layout where you can load the Gantt chart into any mobile devices or desktop applications. It supports the built-in themes and as well as the custom themes. Syncfusion Gantt chart is available across all major web platforms, including Angular, React, Vue.js, ASP.NET MVC, ASP.NET Core, and ASP.NET Core Blazor. So let's get started with the Syncfusion Gantt chart. In this session, you will be looking into how to initiate the Gantt chart with the basic functionalities, make use of advanced timeline feature, enable and perform CRUD operations, enable column filtering and filter tasks, customize the UI with your own task templates. You can identify and take action on unscheduled tasks. So creating a Gantt chart with the basic functionalities you can refer our help.syncfusion.com on getting started with our Gantt application. So we'll just jump into a sample application. So I open a VS Code. And I have opened a terminal. So here I'm going to clone and already available Gantt chart application from GitHub. So in this location, a Gantt application is already available with all these infusion packages. So I'm going to name it as a Gantt application and just press enter. So now all the packages will be installed and, a pro and a, an application will be created. Now, I'm providing a command as npm install to install all the necessary Syncfusion packages to run, get to get this application run. So this is going to take some time to install all the necessary packages within your application. I have already made an application available. So this is a, a simple, a quick start application 
here in the node modules a sync fusion packages will get installed on you once you provided npm install so in the source folder you will be available with the app.js and app.ts files and index.html file so in index.html file i'm going to create a div container element and going to name with an id called gan container so this div element helps us to display the gan in our window so now for the first time i'm going to import the gan package from the node modules so this will be available in at syncfusion slash dj2 hyphen gan now i'm going to create an object to initialize the gan so let's name this as gan and create an object then i need to attach this gan object to the div element which we have created already that's it the gan will be initialized now so now let's provide some data source so the data source indicates your project task a task should have an id a name a start date and an end date so let's create a simple data source so this is an object array type now let's create a single task i am going to name this field as task id and one task name is going to be as research for an example let's take for an example research is the task name and this task is going to start today for instance so 6 27 so this field also accepts the date object and i'm going to provide the duration as four days so this is a simple task now we'll pass this task into the gan data source so data source is the api which accepts the task so this is going to be as data then i'm going to provide some height to display the gan let's say for instance 600 pixels and the important api is the task fields so the task fields is used to map all these fields from the data source to the gan object so the id indicates the task id here we have provided as task caps i caps d the name will be the task name so i have provided as task name caps t caps n need to map the start date so it should be start date and i'm going to map the duration field so it's going to be duration which i have provided that's it the task has been created we have passed the task into the gan data source and i have mapped the task fields so once this has been created i'm going to run this application npm start so after providing npm install i have entered all this information and then i am going to provide npm start so this is going to take some time since the application will be compiling from ts to js and then the gan will be appearing in our browsers so this is a basic task view the the task may have some advanced fields also which we will see later so this is it this is a gan chat with the basic um, default functionalities and features it has an id field a research start date and duration 
So next, we'll see how to include more options into a task. So once you create a, create a, a task, you will need to provide um, a dependency, a task dependencies. Uh, say, say for instance, one task should start after another task or one task should not start when the previous task is completed. So for that, we'll need to provide some dependency information within the task. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a set of a couple of more, couple more tasks. Let's, every, every task should have a unique ID, like a primary key, so a task ID is the primary key. And now what I'm going to do is that I'll be providing the dependency information, dependency, so the dependency field should have uh, the, the task ID. I mean, so the, the, the second task should start after the first task here. So I'm going to provide another dependency, task dependency. Here I'm providing the ID as two. So the task ID three is depending on task two. So I'll rename this as design and implementation just to indicate these are all different tasks. So after providing this field, I need to map this into my task fields. So here, dependency. So once I compile this, so our sample will be refreshing very shortly with the dependency changes and then additional tasks which we have added. All right, so the task have been connected, well connected. The second task design will start once the research task has been completed and the implement task will start once the design task has been completed. So this is how we, we can map the hierarchy between the task. So now let's assign some resources to this task. To assign a resource, first we need to create the resource collection. So let's create the resource data. It should be an array object so each and every resource should have an unique id to identify and a name for that resource obviously so i'm going to map an id and a name let's have this resource name as john and i'm going to create a couple more resources let's have this name as jacob and Smith. That's it. So we'll map this data. So the task one or the research task should be assigned or can be assigned to any resources. So I'll assign it to John. The second task will be assigned to design. Sorry, uh, to Jacob. The third task is, is assigned to Smith. You can also assign multiple resources for a task. That's possible by providing more number of resource IDs over here. So now the data is ready and we need to provide an information. So now we'll map this information. Resource info should be this text which you have provided in the task. And then we need to provide a few more APIs. That is the resources is the collection you need to pass it. We have it in a resource data. The resource name ID mapping the resource ID mapping should be the value which you provided for the resource ID. 
and the resource name mapping should be the value which you provided for the resource name. Um, here I have provided the same ID for the resources. Sorry for that. I have corrected it. And that's it. The resource information I have mapped into the GAN. And let's compile it. So here it is. The resource column will be enabled and it displays the uh, resource which are assigned to each and every task. So what's next is that um, just a simple feature to display the resources beside the task. I'm going to include another API as label settings. This makes uh, the data more readable. I'm going to assign the data source feed which, you, which we have provided and let's compile. I can also assign the right label. It should be the data source feed again. It's compiling and the browser loaded. With the, with the resource information and the task name. Here the timeline has been cropped since we have not provided the project timeline at the beginning. So the Gantt gets the project timeline information from the task. So what we are going to do is that for better readability, I'm going to provide a project start date and a project ended. So let's start with the project start date. So the project start date can be like, a, so it accepts again the both date object and the date string. So let's have somewhere around 23, for instance, 2019. And project end date will be somewhere um, next month like our uh, 25th 2019 it should be within a string and i'll compile this again so let's see when sprouts lowers the timeline will be extended with the new information so here it is the timeline is now starts from mid of june to the mid of July. So this is the basic functionalities or features in Gantt chart. So what's next? Advanced timeline feature. The Gantt has an advanced timeline feature. It has multiple built-in timeline modes like week, month, year, day, and hour. It has a one-tier and two-tier timeline support. It accepts the custom text to be displayed within the timeline. You can display the project data from minutes to decades in Syncfusion Gantt So let's jump into to work with the timeline features. To enable the timeline or to customize the default timeline, I'm going to initiate an API timeline settings. So in this, I have the timeline view mode. So the timeline view mode provides an option to switch between day, hour, minutes, month, none is the default mode, week and year. So I'll make it as a month and for better readability, I'm going to increase the size of the unit, the timeline unit, and I'm going to provide somewhere 200. So let's compile it. So initially, you, you, the Gantt will be loaded with the week mode. Now this will be changed into a month mode. Week mode is the top tier will be displayed in week and the bottom tier will be displayed in the day mode. So here it is. The top tier displayed in the month, June 2019, July 2019. And the bottom tier displays every week, the start of and every week. And the timeline unit size is 200 pixels. 
So now I just want to display the GAN with a single timeline view. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to display the GAN with a single tire using the top tire or you can display it using bottom tire. So in this example, I'm going to initialize the top tire and the unit is going to be the month and uh, I need to format it. So I'm going to format using some my uh, own date string. So it should be a standard date string. So here I'm going to display DDD MMMM for a full month month name and year year year. So that's it. So let's compile this to see the changes, how the Gantt initializes with the the newest changes. So here it is. So it displays as 1 July 2019. So as I provided in the API. So if I want to display my custom text in the timeline mode, what should I do is that we can include a formatter within the top tier API, then I'm going to return a string which, is, which should be displayed over my timeline to make it better. I'm going to change this as a week more and then um, just I'm entering some random custom text. Um, I'm going to display date dot get full year or I'll just mention it as custom timeline or custom text just as custom text. So I'll compile this. So the changes will be reflected in our browser. So custom text colon 2019. So using this formatter option, you can just provide the custom text within the capture. Likewise, you can also customize the bottom tire in Gantt. So these are the features available in our timeline settings. Perform CRUD operations. So as I said earlier, Gantt works in the modular architecture. Gantt is built using modular architecture. So every feature is, you can initiate every feature using by injecting the modules. So in the CRUD operations, we'll see how to edit the task on the go using the self editing, dialogue editing, and taskbar editing. You can handle the updated data using the events. You can assign or reassign a resource to the task dynamically. So initially we saw how to initiate a task by assigning a resource. Here we can see how to reassign or delete a resource dynamically. And you can update the task hierarchy interactive using the Kanata line editing. So let's see. So performing editing, I'm going to inject few modules like edit, toolbar, and selection. So after injecting, after including these modules, I'm going to inject into the Gantt object. So edit, toolbar, and selection. So what are the APIs to enable the editing? So those are edit settings. So in edit settings, we have an option for allow adding. So I'm going to enable it. Allow editing, true. Allow deleting, true. And allow taskbar editing, true. So this is to edit the taskbars interactively. So after enable the editing, I'm going to enable the selection part 
just to make clear when you select a task I'm going to enable this and then I'm going to enable the toolbar the toolbar is a predefined contains a predefined options to add edit delete update an edit option or cancel an editing action so that's it so the editing options has been included the can so let's see how it works so I'm saving this and compiling the changes and a browser loads the uh, can with editing enabled so here you can see the toolbar with an add option alone so the can toolbar works in a contextual way where the toolbar items will display the items contextually so once you select the edit and delete option will be enabled and when you start editing the update and cancel options will pop up in the toolbar so you can pro you can perform the research uh, i mean you can perform the cell editing by double clicking the cell each and every cell so i'm just editing it i can change the start date like this so now what i'm going to do is this is the cell editing option you can also perform the dialogue editing so the dialogue pops up with all the options available to edit in a task so task ID is uneditable so you can edit the task name the start date or duration so the dependency so the dependency is that you can add the options available for um, for connecting a task here you can't find any task because it's already connected with the all the available tasks so this is option available and you can enable uh, editing for resources so I'm adding the resources and saving it let's see And along with dialogue editing, we can perform taskbar editing options. In the taskbar editing, you have an option to left edit, right edit, progress editing, and you can change the start date and end date as well by using drag and options. Along with this taskbar editing, you have an option for performing predecessor editing by drag and drop option. So you can perform four types of predecessor or task dependencies from the starting or from the ending so here i'm performing f2s connection finish to start connection and connecting here so you can connect or perform hierarchy actions interactively using predecessor editing so these are the editing options available in GAN. so what's next filter task in a project Gantt chats, Syncfusion Gantt chat allows you to perform column filtering using the filter module. So let's see how to enable the filtering option available in Gantt. So I'm going to include the filter module and inject it into the Gantt object. So after performing module injection, I'll just include the allow filtering API so once I save this and compile it so the changes will be reflected into the box browser and the filter option will be enabled across all the columns so a filter menu will be appearing once I click the filter icon you can choose between the predefined predicates available in, across all the filter menu so i'm just providing the start with predicate and i'm going to uh, filter a task and this is an autocomplete so you, you 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 don't need to memorize each and every task name you could just select the task name and perform filter and there you go the task has been filtered here 
and you can just clear it using the clear button option. There is an also an option to uh, display the filter icon only on specific columns using the columns object. Gan, Syncfusion GANCHAT provides the column API to, to change the column definitions. So next is the custom task templates. You can apply the custom templates for the task bars and even for the task labels. You can customize the theme for the GAN chart using our ag2.synfusion.com slash theme studio. Syncfusion GAN chart is, is, has a support for built-in themes like bootstrap theme, fabric theme, that's Microsoft 360, Office 365 theme, material theme and high contrast theme. So let's look into how to customize a default task bar. So here I have a ready-made task template. So I have defined it within a script element and I have defined a simple div element with the task name E GAN child task bar. So this class name is necessary to customize a child task bar. That's a normal task bar. So in the GAN, this UI is called as a child task bar. This is a parent task bar and this is a milestone. So this for this child, child task bar, I have created a template and I have set some custom styling and I'm going to map this template within my GAN object. To map the template, I'm going to have taskbar template and map the script elements ID over here. You can also map the parent taskbar template or milestone template with your custom template script templates. I'm going to compile it now. And let's see how this customization happens in the browser. The browser refreshes here. And here you go. The custom templates has been loaded from the HTML file into your Gantt object. You can still perform the editing options with the custom templates. So what's next? Handle the unplanned task in a project. So if you're having a huge project and there, there will be a case where you can't define a start date or duration at the beginning of a project. So for that cases where the start date, end date or duration is not cannot be defined for the task, GAN provides support for handling those tasks. So those tasks are called as unplanned or unscheduled tasks. Let's say for instance, I'm going to remove the duration from this task since I, I'm not sure how long the design task will going to happen. And I'll, re I'll remove this start date from the implement task since I'm not sure when this is going to start. I'll, to make it clear, I've just removed the dependency since mapping the dependency will again automatically creates the task with the start date and duration field. The GAN automates itself when a predecessor is connected or when the task dependency is there, the GAN automatically calculates the start date and end date and sets for the task. So now I have removed the duration from here and the start date from here and I'm going to include another API called allow unscheduled task. So this is a boolean value and save, I've saved the changes and compile it. So here it is. For this task, I haven't this I haven't defined the duration. So I have defined only the um, only the start date. So this is going to start on 26th, 27th of uh, June. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the taskbar template to make things clear. 
So I'll remove this API to look how the task differs when we have defined an unplanned task in the data source. I'll compare those changes again, and the changes will be loaded into the browser. So it still loads, and here it is. So here it is. So for this task, I have defined only the task start date. And for this task, I have defined only the duration. So in this case, if the duration is only, only the duration is defined, it automatically uh, sets to the project start date. So this is how a task looks when the duration alone is defined. So once I try to edit this, the start date and end date will be defined automatically. So in this case also, if I def uh, edit, try to edit it, the start date and end date will be duration will be defined for this task. So this is how you can handle the unplanned task in your project using Syncfusion CanChat. So these are the features we have went through in Syncfusion CanChat. So we initialized the CanChat with a simple task, mapped those data source into the task, into the CanChat. We have enabled the resources, enabled the labels, task labels. We defined the project start date and end date. Use the timeline settings feature, editings, and filtering, as well as unplanned tasks. So you can find all the resources for the GAN, Syncfusion GAN chat in our ej2.syncfusion.com. We have a set of online demo samples in this location. You can also go through our online user guide documentation at help.syncfusion.com. We have an in-depth and fully explained feature set in our online user guide documentation. You can also go through our feature tool explained in our syncfusion.com slash components page. So these are the live samples we have. So Gantt is still in a preview version. So this is our help.syncfusion.com. So this is our feature tool documentation. You, you can just go through the features available in the Gantt So what's coming in our next version? So as I said, Syncfusion Gantt chart is still in a preview version. We, are, we, are, we have implemented the responsive layout, advanced touch gesture support, zooming timelines in our volume two version, which is expected to release next month. We have also planned for PDF export, advanced resource view, UI in the Gantt chart in our volume three release. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Hi everyone. I'm gonna briefly tell you a little bit about Syncfusion. Syncfusion delivers an extensive range of over 1,000 web, mobile, and desktop controls. We also empower businesses to get the most out of their data with our enterprise solutions, including the dashboard and big data platforms. We've been headquartered in the Raleigh-Durham area of North Carolina in the U.S. for the past 17 years. And Syncfusion has more than 12,000 customers, including large financial institutions, Fortune 100 companies, and global IT consultancies. More than 1 million users from 125 countries trust Syncfusion in the development process. To keep up to date with us and gain access to tons of instructional videos and other great content, you can follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube accounts. And these provide a great platform for us to communicate and update our users and hear their feedback. Speaking of feedback, we have a G2 Crowd page, which is a peer-to-peer -peer review site. If you'd like to check out what other users have to say or would like to share your own feedback, we'd love to hear from you. So I just wanted to thank you all again for joining us today. And thank you, Varoth, again for presenting. Yeah, thank you, Karta. Thank you for having me and Manikandan from my side. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all again very much for joining us. If you have any questions, please let us know. Connect with us on Facebook, on any kind of social media, or email us. We really appreciate it. Have a good day, and we'll see you again.